Hi guys, so today we are talking about our fourth part of our um, information about ballistics and how to use them in forensics. So uh, we're going to start talking about gunshot residue. So basically when a person fires a gun, uh, the explosion that happens, which we've talked about before, uh, basically creates this super fine cloud of particles and it tends to land in these spots. Hands, obviously, because that's what you're using to hold on to the gun, but also the face, uh, usually the shirt underneath the arm area and usually on the bottoms of the pants near the shoes and the area underneath where the gun was fired would also have this gunshot residue on it. Gunshot residue is essentially a whole bunch of burnt and unburnt powder. It's pieces or very, very tiny flakes of metal from the bullet, from the casing, maybe even from the barrel of the gun itself. As the cloud settles, it coats all these areas. So primarily you'd be looking at hands, any exposed skin or clothing that the person might have been wearing. And you would sample these with a GSR kit. Um, and different manufacturers make different kinds of kits. Uh, in the TV shows, you'll often see them as a, like a cotton swab or a, like a towelette they will use to wipe over somebody's hands and then it changes color if gunshot residue is there. Uh, forensics experts can also obtain evidence using uh, bullet wipes. So basically they look at the deposits on the thing the bullet hit, whether that's a item of clothing or it's the uh, wallboard that it does, that it smacked into. And so you, they can get well, bullet wipe deposits, partially burnt or unburnt powder, and trace materials from the bullet from that, as well as the gunshot residue that may or may not be on the person who fired the gun. Uh, lab experts uh, do GSR tests. Usually GSR tests can be done by police officers as well as uh, CSI investigators, meaning that it, it, they're pretty simple to do and that evidence can be entered into a court of law. And usually what they're looking for are lead, antimony, and barium. These are the primary things you would find in gunshot residue. And these are the, the big three important things that would let you know that yes, this person has fired a weapon. So uh, gunshot residue can adhere to the person holding the firearm, leaving evidence on them in close range shootings. You may well get GSR on the victim as well as the person who fired the gun. The gases from the explosion are what are propelling all of these bits of metal and unburnt powder around. And so what gunshot residue tests look like I am going to go ahead and show you. Important part of the investigation centers around determining whether the two shooting victims fired a gun at officers. Gunshot residue tests will help make that determination. News Channel 5's Kristen Volk was invited into the BCI lab today to see how that testing is done. And she joins us live with more. What did you see, Chris? Lee, I traveled to Richfield today to the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, or BCI, to learn just how that determination is made about whether a gun was fired during that CPD shooting. This is inside the BCI, home to all kinds of crime scene evidence, tire tracks, shoe prints, even gunshot residue. When a firearm is discharged, there's this cloud of material that is expelled out of all the openings in the weapon. It's Marty Lewis's job to study that material from crime scene samples and determine whether a person was involved in a shooting. The forensic scientist performs gunshot residue tests at BCI's Summit County office nearly every day. It can be helpful in a lot of cases where we have no idea what happened. That's the big question in the Cleveland police high-speed chase and shooting that left two people dead late last month. The gunshot residue test is a highly anticipated part of the investigation, which is led by this office. Lewis and his colleagues couldn't comment on their CPD findings, but they did talk about the process. The test itself is, I guess, 
somewhat simple. It starts with a gunshot residue collection kit at the scene. Criminal investigators use an adhesive tape to dab a suspect's hands for evidence of gunshot particles. We can also do it on other objects as well, such as clothing and cars. The samples are then sent to BCI, where manager Jeff Lewis oversees the testing process. Scientists analyze the samples using this high-tech microscope, sometimes within a matter of hours. But the results may leave a lot of unanswered questions. It only determines whether residue is present, not who fired the gun. Someone could be near a gun when it's discharged, but actually not be the shooter. I spoke to BCI today who says it'll take at least several months before they'll release any findings in this investigation, but I will keep you posted on that. From, from Live from the Justice Center, I'm Kristen Volk, News Channel 5. Uh, evidence from wounds can also be really important. Generally, entrance wounds are smaller than exit wounds. If a projectile goes through clothing first, there may be fibers from the clothing that are in the wound itself. And if the projectile is fired when the muzzle is against the skin or clothing, you would get flash burns as a result on the clothing. So, for example, this uh, here would be when the muzzle was right up against that T-shirt when they fired the gun. And you can see the flash burns there. Uh, farther away than four feet, only a projectile hole would be visible. So both of these are within four feet. Usually, if the victim is standing more than four feet away from the person firing the gun, you're not going to get gunshot residue on that victim. It's only going to happen if they're within a very close range. Usually, four feet is the general rule. So, as a summary, uh, ballistics is a study of mechanics and behavior of fired projectiles. Modern firearms are long guns that require two hands, handguns that require only one hand, and shotguns are a kind of long gun. Projectiles fired from a firearm show patterns called lands and grooves um, that can be compared to the rifling of the barrel of the gun. A cartridge is made up of a primer, gunpowder, bullet, casing, and the casing that holds the whole thing together. So all of that is considered a cartridge. The bullet is part of the cartridge. A uh, caliber of a cartridge is the diameter of the top of that cartridge, the top where the bullet is. That is your the diameter of that. That's your caliber. Firing pin marks, breech block marks, extractor marks, uh, and cartridge. These would all be found on the cartridge casing and would help you match the casing to the weapon. Gunshot residue can identify someone who has recently fired a gun. Now, what are the marks on this cartridge? So let's see if we can review here. So notice there's an L here and a C, so that's probably Lake City. LC is going to be the manufacturer. There's 08 here, that's probably the year. Notice the firing pin mark here in the center is round, and it's pretty much centered, right? There's also an ejector mark right here that you can see. And there are some other marks here. But those may or may not be super important. For our purposes, what I want you to be able to tell me is that the manufacturer mark is on there, the year is on there, it's got a round firing pin, and it has an ejector mark. Now, let's try this one. So this one's a little bit different. Notice this is S&W, that's Smith & Wesson. Uh, so that's the manufacturer. Actually. Uh, CCI is the manufacturer right here, sorry. S&W 40, S&W is the caliber. So all of that together is the caliber. So it's 40 Smith & Wesson. The manufacturer is CCI here. The firing pin is not round, it's oblong. So you have an oblong firing pin and you have what's obviously a smacked mark here for a breech block mark over the top of that firing pin mark. So in this case, you can see the manufacturer, you can see the caliber, you can see the firing pin, and you can see a breech block mark. 
on this one, whereas on this one, we could see the manufacturer and the year, but we could not see the caliber because it wasn't printed on there. We see in this one the ejector mark and the firing pin mark. We don't really see an ejector mark on this guy. So hopefully that helps you to summarize the last part of our uh, ballistics and forensics unit.